another attempt, yet again, uh, to make a jerkbait video. Now last year I tried to make a jerkbait video, I came to this canal and it wore uh, the colour of mud, which is a bit strange for this canal. Uh, today it's crystal clear, it's like tap water, so it's perfect. Um, however, <laughs> I've already had a failed attempt at making a jerkbait video this year. Um, for quite a few reasons, chainsaws, dogs barking, vehicles up driving up and down, trains, <laughs> uh, and also forget to turn on the uh, microphone. So, today it's all about jerk baits. Right, so first of all, what is a jerkbait? For those of you who don't know what a jerkbait is, um, which is usually, uh, it seems to me a lot of uh, America and Europe don't know what a jerkbait is. Um, actually, what what we're seeing is, is a glide bait. Um, but typically, you'll, you'll hear me and Aidy call that a jerkbait, and a lot of um, a lot of the UK uh, lower angles will call that a jerkbait. But it's, it's, in actual fact, it's a glide bait. It doesn't really matter, you can call it a dog tail if you want, it doesn't really matter does it, but um, this is a jerkbait video and that's a jerkbait to me and you. Um, our, our American friends and European friends might be want to argue a little bit, but uh, a jerkbait for those that uh, want to know, I'll, I'll stick a little picture in this. Um, often a little, similar to like a little crankbait, usually a, a thinner lip or smaller lip. Uh, they're weighted differently, they've got the weights inside them often and uh, we're designed to just twitch them and jerk them. Obviously that's why it's called jerk bait. You jerk it a little lower, it's like a little um I'm trying to think of a, an example, but anyway. Uh, and they're they're jerk baits. And that's a glide bait. But this is a jerk bait video. So um reasons why you might use this this over um any other low. Well uh I see I see a lot of people going out and trying to catch fish and uh, a simple low like a soft shad, we'll catch you loads of fish. But I get bored. So I'll show you a few examples of jerk baits that I've I've collected. Um, first of all, you've got a couple here by one of my mates. 
Matt Holmes. Uh, what he often does is he'll he'll sometimes make I don't know a dozen a dozen baits, a dozen lures. He'll just get a bit of inspiration one day, and he'll make some lures. Um, and he'll keep a couple for himself and his for his mates, and he'll sell the rest to you know lads on on the on the internet. Um, I keep trying to convince him to make more because he makes some really nice lures. You can see those. I mean, I've had, I've had these years. I've got uh, what you get. What you have with most jerk baits these these handcrafted wood. They're made from wood. They're painted up, and then they get a hard, um, like an epo epoxy environment. I don't know what they call it. Uh, really hard outer skin. So if I still keep the um, the pattern, you just get a few scratches on them. Um, and I've had this one years. Had so many, these are, used to have had so many fish on them. Unbelievable. Really, really quality lures. Um, one of the newer ones that I've got. Off a, off a new, new lure, lure builder to me. That's Ryan Lambert. Uh, and he's making me some jerk baits. And uh, really good quality. He's spent a lot of time not just doing the paint patterns, but it's all about weighting them. And he's got the weighting right of these really good. I've seen some of his other lures and they're really good, so I've already asked him to make some. Um, uh, long time favourites for, for many, the Cobbs jerk baits. Got one with a tail, Finman with a tail. Sometimes you get jerk baits with a tail, like that. Um, another recent purchase, oh, a couple more Cobbs. In fact, I'd forgot I'd got that Cobb, I've had it that long. That's caught me in just hundreds of fish. Um, and a newer, larger version. Well, not, not version of the same one, but newer, newer, newer larger cobs jerk bait. Um, put a really big glide. You've seen Ada using jerk baits plenty of time, I'm sure, on the videos. Um, what else have we got? Mark out on jerk baits. It makes a range of uh, jerk baits as Mark. I've got quite a few. In fact, I haven't even brought everything I've got. Um, One of the old favourites for many, although I don't often use it for some strange reason. This jerk bait's got a bit of a um, bit of a, a paddle on the back. It's a bit of a tail, and it's designed to help help keep it straight. And it's one of the easiest um, jerk baits to use. It just it just works. And you just cast it and wind it in basically, and it'll just glide from left and right. Uh, but to be honest, um, that's a feature of, of um, most jerk baits. If they've been, been weighted what, really good, you don't actually have to tap your rod. You don't have to jerk, you just cast it out and wind it in. Um, you sometimes find with things like the, the plastic versions, the Buster Jerk or the Savage Gear Deviators and things, you sometimes got to put a bit of action in it yourself. Um, but it still works, catches fish. The difference with that one, hard plastic, internal rattle, and you know that pike like a rattle, so they catch fish. Um, so I'll have a go with a few and we'll, uh, we're not, we're not going to catch no fish today. Um, We'll have a go with a few and see what we can, what we can see. I'm using my uh, the BFT Roots 160 gram, the Kuma Komodo 350 or 364, it's often labelled as. Um, we've got 80 pound braid, I don't really want to lose those um, expensive lows. You crack off on light braid, your expensive low goes into the distance. Um, titanium trace, 100 pound titanium trace. Uh, and that's that's you've seen me use that umpteen times. Um, start with a river run manta, just because it's an easy one to use. Basically, jerk baits. Um, the important thing with jerk baits, cast like bullets. The important thing with jerk baits is keep that line, keep that line tight, keeping in contact with your, with your line. And um, although it's called, I'm calling it a jerk bait. You can see I'm not actually jerking my rod. Just a simple turn of the handle, and that gets the load to work. So as that load comes in. As you turn your handle, that's gonna it's gonna turn that nose, and it's gonna naturally naturally it'll start to glide 
start to glide to one side and staying in contact as you as you um, crank your handle once more it's going to make it turn that way and it's going to glide again back that way and as you, the same again crank your handle it's going to glide back that way again and that's that's basically it now you can what you've got to do with all these loads is they'll all, they'll all run slightly different some you might have to crank fast some you might have to add a little bit of a jerk or a tap um, you've got, got to learn your low so I spend a bit of time crystal clear water's perfect spend a bit of time getting used to it so if I jerk this one it's a massive glide straight away so you can't really fail with this one and, and um, a glide like that is something you can't get from, from your over, overloads, your crankbaits, your, your soft plastics and it's something different so that's why I always say to have a bit of a riot in your, in your bag uh, just to that different action what it does is it, it keeps um, that side to side action it, just, it keeps the load in the face for so so much longer than a you know a load that you, 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 um, you're cranking past them um, you, you, you're gliding it left and right left and right and it's right in the face and, and that can get them going like I say they're seeing, seeing that flash of the body as well you know whatever paint pattern you've got they're seeing that flash constantly um, and what you can also add in as well which same with most styles of low fishing um, add a pause some of your loads have got a bit of a, a bit of a wobble as a fall gives off more shimmer um, and that all that added together is you just ace so we'll go the opposite of this one we'll go for an hard plastic jerk bait bust a jerk so let's say this is you getting your, getting your first your first jerk bait you cast it out Crank the handle, see what it does. Basically, what that's what that does is it does glide left and right. But if you if you crank too fast, it keeps your low sort of going straight. So it's all about timing. You've got to make it glide left and wait till it gets to the end of it, and then, and then back again all the way. And that's your. That's what you've got to learn with each low. Now what I like to do with a Buster Jerk is because it's got that rattle, it's, it's something I like to mix it up. So I actually get it erratic, so I'll, I'll jerk it fast. And I get that noise going as well. And then I'll pause it, and then I'll jerk it. And it's not so much, it does it does jerk left to right. But it's, I'm, not, I'm not too fussed about that one being a perfect glide. If I want to do a perfect glide, I'll get one of the other jerk baits out. A nice and steady uh, glide. On the, on the jerk bait, on the Buster Jerk, sorry. I wanted to crank it fast. get that noise and get that panic so when you go back to a standard big cobs quite a new purchase to me already had loads of fish on it big heavy piece of piece of wood I don't know 160 gram easy um, and this one, no no rod taps, just cranking the handle half a turn, slight pause. And I know at, at distance, I know what that low's doing because I've I've learned it. I've watched it, watched it close in. It's all important is, is keeping in contact with that low, that line. Too much slack, and if you get a take, you won't even notice. Because what you'll find often with these is um, the takes are really quick. Pike come up and strike it at, at, at the low. Um, sometimes you'll see the boil of the water behind you where your low is, and you, then you realise you missed something. Now your rods are, are quite stiff often, the jerk bit rods often quite stiff, got a bit of backbone and that's, that's, one, that's one for casting, uh, but it's also to try and impart your action, if you've got a big long soft floppy rod, as you try to impart that action your rod's just going to bend, 
your rod will bend every time you 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 try to jerk or every time you try to wind in that rod will just do that and it'll it'll soak up the action of your low your, your low won't, won't do anything so that's why you have a stiff rod so the action goes straight into your low um, but just because it's a stiff rod don't mean that it, it's not they're not sensitive you still feel everything you can still feel your low you can still feel your line so one one um, important bit about your rod um, your rod's really really stiff uh, that's, that's often what a jerk bait rod is got a bit of, got a lot of backbone casting a heavy weight obviously you're not casting a little shad you're casting a big lump of wood so it needs a bit of a bit of oomph behind it a bit of backbone um, but also as you're jerking or as you're as you're tapping the rod um, you don't want a big soft I can get that on camera you don't want a soft floppy one because as, as you jerk the rod your low's gonna your rod's gonna do that and rather than your low going side to side your rod's gonna soak up the action uh, you want it to go straight into that line so you've got your braid no stretchy mono, you've got a braided line, a stiff rod, and as you as you crank your handle, that's going to twitch that low and put the put the action into the low. Um, but they are quite sensitive these rods, even though they are big beefy things. You still feel everything, you still feel all the bumps and things. Um, but what you need to do, one massive tip, I see a few people sometimes doing this, and it's it's not good practice. Is make sure that butt of that rod's against your arm. It needs to be against your arm. Um, a couple of reasons, you'll, you'll, it'll help you feel things, it'll, you'll feel taps better on there but your most important one is you've got a trigger grip on your on your bait casting rods but if you've got your rod here like this um, and you get, a, you get a solid take as that pulls it, it's just going to pull that out of, your, out of your arm like that and that rod is just going to flick like that and you, you basically <laughs> either going to let go of your rod or you're going to snap your wrist or something but you're not, you're not going to set the hooks so by having it against your arm Anything that pulls is just naturally it's going to dig into your arm as opposed to that. And I'm telling you, if if um, you get some some takes from Pike when they hit it, they're proper solid takes, and they do drag it, drag the rod, and you need to have that against your arm, uh, against your elbow. And that's why some some people like short rods. Um, some people like them quite long. Often it's it's too about your elbow. Um, a little bit extra on this BFT roots one comes in handy for. Um, giving you more casting distance, long, more leverage um, than a shorter rod would. If you had a shorter rod, you've got less leverage. So your hands there, and you've not, you're not going to cast as far. So that's why you're a little bit longer. But that's typically about where you want it. Um, so every rod's different for every person. But <laughs> I've got to pull that back, otherwise I ended in that tree on that banking. So I've loads at distance stiff jerk bit rod, point your rod down and just crank it, I don't need to watch what I'm doing I know my low's working right, you'll actually start to feel that your low's working right, if it's working wrong uh, you'll feel the line will feel a bit different all comes with experience and, and just practice and doing it more often um, but I know that that's, that's jerking left to right now nice and I'm just ace for covering water the time that it's out there is, you can see now it's quite a long time that it's out there Putting a, putting a pause and let it sink. And although I'm not watching my line, I'm, I'm talking to you on the camera. Um, what you want to do is, is watch your rod and watch your line. I'll, just sh I'll show you again. What I'm, what I'm trying to say here is, you watch that line and keep it tight. Hopefully this will be on film. But if that happens and your line gets a sudden bow in it, the fish has hit your lure and come towards you. And often, often you often you hear Eddie talk about a slack line take, a massive slack line, and that's what he's talking about. The pike's come up from behind it as, you, as your low's gone to one side, probably just on the pause, and the pike's just come up from behind you, just absolutely smashed it, come towards you, and you've got all this slack line. And basically, um, <laughs> we've seen me and Eddie sometimes when we're fishing, um, you get a massive slack line, like that and you, you basically you, you're reeling. You're striking and you're running up bank all in one action to try and get that, that slack line back. Uh, not easy when you're on a boat, but basically just yank it as hard as you can. Um, it's just awesome takes. Now one thing you can do with a jerk bait, or a decent jerk bait, one that's weighted well, you can actually steer it around obstacles. Um, typical jerk sends it one way and the other, but if you if you vary that and you do like a you know, a quarter of a turn or a tiny jerk, it'll jerk, it'll only go slightly one way and you tap it again harder and it'll bring it back wide this time and do a little one. And it, so you can make it steer around things, so it's not just 
bring it straight towards you so you know if there's a bit of weed or a or a, um, a branch or something you can actually work it around it so try not to just be in the mode of cast it out and bring it straight towards you watch what's in front of you don't get it tangled up in weed and things try and work it around so a, a shallow twitch and a, and a big one it'll make it glide and a shallow one and a big one and it ends up over here then so um, use that use that to your advantage um, if you can't do it, you can't do it with some of those because they're not, they're not rated that good. But a good, a good lure will let you do that. As I mentioned before, the, your, your jerk bait, glide bait, it's a great way of uh, covering the water, uh, covering a lot of water. Um, I mean, this, this canal today, um, I think in the middle it's only going to be six foot. It's crystal clear water. Um, and I know if I just use that lure and I, and I you know, travel light I've got a lot of gear with me now but if I travel light just use that load don't mess about changing swapping and changing um, I can stand in one spot I can fan cast you know five casts um, you know a bit of a fan cast one in front two to each side along your margin you've, you've covered your water and anything that's um, that sees that will come and chase it you'll either see the fish um, or, you'll, or you'll get a reaction somewhere where it'll, it'll grab your low uh, and then move and just keep doing it so it's a great low for, for covering water um, they move a lot of water themselves as a, as a as a glide to push water that attracts the pike, it gets their attention, uh, that flash. Um, but basically, stick that on. This canal um, is pretty featureless to be honest. There's not not a lot here. Now, I walked I walked a long distance down here just to see if I could actually spot any fish, but I didn't spot anything. So I'm not really really fancy in fishing it. But if I were going to fish it, um, I probably wouldn't have anything else with me. I would just have that. I probably have a couple of lows just in case. I got a follow from a fish and um, it didn't take this and I could have something to, to swap it, you know, something a bit more natural or, you know, a swim bait or something. Um, but I just fished this this stretch with that low and if there's something there it'll take. Um, me and Eddie recently, um, we went fishing um, on a new river to us, uh, went for a bit of a change and um, we got quite a bit of depth to it, there were like 12, 14 foot. Uh, in, in parts and we expected that the fish would be you know a little bit, little bit colder weather we expected the fish would be lower down and we covered a good i don't know a good half a mile of river and didn't even see a fish uh, we're struggling uh, both of us leapfrogging each other uh, big softies um, and we didn't get we didn't get anything and then for some random reason we switched to a to a jerk bait we both ended up switching to a cobs at the same time and, and immediately we, we both got fish and we're fishing two foot depth in 14 foot of water uh, and we started catching fish. Well, nothing massive, but we, we caught we caught loads of fish, and we wouldn't have caught them fish because we we actually covered the same water on the way back and caught on jerk baits. So sometimes it is that variety that, that gets them going. So make sure you've got a bit of variety. But jerk bait is is one thing you need to have. What you must have when you're fishing these lures: big pair of pliers, something tough. Forceps just aren't strong enough. You've got big hooks on these lures. Forceps aren't strong enough. So a big big pair of pliers uh, and your cutters. Sometimes things go wrong, awkward hookups, and the simplest thing to do is just cut your hooks. Um, you get the hooks in a bad position, sometimes you've got three hooks in, and it's easier just to snip, snip your hooks off uh, and, and put some new ones. Get, uh, what I tend to buy is buy, you know, buy quite a few a few uh, hooks, um, and although I ain't got them in my bag today, usually I've got a load of spares, and you just cut them off and they'll only cost you 20 pence or something, 30 pence, uh, and it's a lot easier. So that's a little look at jerk baits, uh, and in particular uh, custom built jerk baits. They're the ones that we enjoy using most. It's just good fun fishing them. Nice and relaxing. Uh, and when you find a new one like this one, Godfather jerk, cruel baits. It's a new little, new little toy. I just love using it. I'd rather catch a fish on this than a live bait or a dead bait or a soft shad.